Cool. Hey everybody. Uh, today we're gonna build a basic turret system in Unity. Just a setup so that you can let your players kind of place objects in the world. Uh, for this one, we'll do turrets, but you can really extend it out to build anything you want. To get started, I imported two asset packs. You'll see the links down below. There's just a mountain and a turret. They're both free on the asset store. But one of them, I believe it was the turret, has an error down here. So you can see it's using some old standard asset stuff. So to fix that, I'm just going to go into the project view and delete that. It's just for their sample scene, and we don't need it anyway. Next, I'm going to open up the free mountain and just open up their demo scene. Here you can see it's just a nice, pretty cool looking little mountain. Um, but we need to move this camera around. So our game, I kind of want to have it down by the ground so that it's more player point of view focused. So I'm just going to go down here, get into a spot that I like, and then just use Control Shift F with the camera selected, and that just moves the camera to where I am. And actually, I think I want to move it back just a little bit. There we go. A little bit further back. And maybe get that hill in there. Cool. Alright, um, the next thing I need to do is make sure that this camera is tagged as the main camera. Our code today is going to be using the main camera, and if we don't have that in here, it won't find it. Alright, so I'll save this scene, and then we need to create a placement object. So this is just going to be a manager that's going to control the placement of our turrets. To do that, I'll go game object, create empty, so we'll just call it turret placement controller. There we go. And then over here, I'll just reset the transform, add a new component, and we'll call this, well, let's name it ground placement controller. And then I'm going to rename this object so that it matches. This, really, this can place any kind of objects, not just turrets. All right, open it up in Visual Studio. and start coding. So the first thing we're gonna need is a reference to a prefab. So to do that, we add a new serialized field and we make a private game object and we'll call this placeable object prefab. Since we really wanna be able to place anything, just a generic game object will be fine. Um, another thing I want in here is a hotkey. So I'm gonna do private key code and we'll call this new object hotkey. And I'll kind of set a default. I'm going to set it to the letter A. You can see here, though, that a key code just lines up with any key on your keyboard or a joystick button. Uh, but A is good for now. And we'll be able to edit this in the editor because of the serialized field attribute. Let's see. In start, we don't really need to do anything. So we'll delete it. And then we'll implement the update method. Uh, the first thing I want to do is check to see if the player presses the hotkey. If they do, we're going to be creating a new object that we can place in the world. So we'll do a handle new object hotkey method. And we'll just do control period to generate a method there. In this method, we want to check if input.key down the key down and then our new object hotkey so if they press the hotkey then we want to let's see first we want to check to see if we're currently placing anything but we don't have a reference to that yet so let's do this create a, another private game object not serialized this time it won't be in the inspector do private game object current placeable ah, a bull object now in here we'll check to see if we have one already so if current placeable object is null so if we don't have one yet we're going to set it to a new one so we'll do current placeable object equals instantiate and we're going to instantiate the placeable object prefab so here we'll create a new instance of whatever this prefab is um, if we do have an instance though so we already had one Let's do this. We'll make it so that we can destroy it by pressing the key twice. So that way if we hit the key and we change our mind, we don't want to place it, we can just hit the same key again to destroy it. 
do that, we'll just do destroy current placeable object. And since this is a reference to the game object, we don't have to put anything else after this. If it was a reference to the transform or some other script on there, we'd have to do the dot game object afterwards. Um, let's see, so now we've got handling the hotkey done. Let's do a little bit more. So if we have a current placeable object, so if that's not null, spell that out if it's not equal to null we want to move the current placeable object so we'll do move current placeable object to mouse that's good generate a method for that okay. in this method we're gonna cast a ray from the mouse position straight into the world to do that we do ray ray equals camera dot main this is why we needed to tag it as main camera dot screen point to ray it's already right there for us and the value we want to pass in is the input dot mouse position so this is just going to give us a ray straight into the world then we need to do a ray cast so for our ray cast we want to have a ray cast hit first so we do ray cast hit call it hit info this is going to store the info if we actually hit with our raycast and we'll do if physics dot raycast and we want to pass in our ray and then do out hit info so what's going to happen here is it's going to do raycast and if it hits something so if it hits a collider we're going to get info about what it hit in this hit info variable so if it does hit, what we want to do is set the current placeable object's transform position to the hit info position. Ah, point, sorry. So this is going to move the object along wherever we have the mouse. Uh, the other thing we want to do though is rotate it. So if we put the object on a flat surface, this would be fine. But as soon as we go onto one of those hills, it would be kind of clipping into the object. So let's change that and make it rotate with our hit. So we'll do current placeable in object dot transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot from to rotation. We'll pass in vector three dot up and hit info dot normal. What this is going to do is just make it stand up. So if we hit the side of a tower here, uh, the side or the side of a mountain here, instead of going like this, it's going to be rotated like that. So it kind of stands out the right way. Um, that's all we need to do to move it. Next, we want to rotate it. So assuming we want to allow the player to rotate the turret around, we'll add another method for rotation that will use the mouse wheel. So we'll do rotate from mouse wheel. And in here, we're going to set a variable called mouse wheel rotation equal to input dot mouse scroll delta dot y this is going to give us the amount that the scroll wheel has turned since the last frame and this isn't initialized so i'm just going to do control period and generate a field for it if i hit f12 you can see generated a field right up here where it needed to be um, the other thing we want to do is do current placeable object at transform dot rotate. So this is going to, uh, not rotation, rotate. This is going to rotate the object to match. We're going to do vector three dot up and then comma mouse wheel rotation times, now uh, we'll do 10. This is just speed up the rotation. Without that, if we rotate the mouse wheel a little bit, it's going to turn really slow, take a long time to spin it around. This will just make it 10 times faster. Now the reason we're doing this rotation is, you can see down here, we're, we're setting the rotation based off of the hit point, and then right after that we're going to rotate it to the correct direction based off of how much they've turned the mouse wheel. And this mouse wheel va variable is stored, so it's not getting reset every frame. Um, the last thing we want to do is allow the user to left click to release the object. So to do that we'll do release if clicked. We'll generate this method and in here let's see what do we need to do I think we really just need to check to see if they click so if input dot mouse button down zero so left click so if they left click we'll do current placeable object equals no and we're done all right so now we'll jump back over to unity not that 
So now you see here, you can see we have the hotkey variable. We can adjust it to whatever we want. And we can also put in our prefab. For the prefab, we're going to use the turret from that sci-fi assets pack. Expand this out and they have the prefabs folder here. And let's just use turret one. So drop in turret one A. And now if I press play right now, it's not going to work. Let me show you. So I press play, hit A and nothing happens. The reason for that is that the mountain doesn't have a collider on it. So if I select the free mountain, if you look over here, there's a renderer, a mesh filter, but there's no collider. So if I just add a mesh collider, save the scene again, press play. Now if I hit A, I've got a turret. I can move it around, put it up on the side of the mountain, wherever I want, and then the mouse wheel will theoretically spin it around. Oh, the mouse wheel's not spinning it. Why is the mouse wheel not spinning it? Interesting. This should work. Let's take a look. Why is that mouse wheel not spinning it? Rotate from mouse wheel. Oh. Plus equals. That's the problem. I didn't put the plus. I was just setting it to equals. Cool, so now if I press play, we should be able to place our turret and spin it around. Let's give it a shot. So we're in game, I hit A on the keyboard. There's our turret, we can move it around. You can see it, it lines up right if we put it up on the mountain or on one of these hills. And then I can use the mouse wheel to just spin it around, put it wherever I want, left click to place it, hit A and put out another turret. All right, now we've got the basics of a placement system. Like I said, we could extend this out to do all kinds of other things. We could place any kind of object, really. We could uh, eventually change out this uh, prefab to be an array of prefabs and then cycle through them with a hotkey or build up a menu system or something else. If you want to find out more about this, just click the link to read the full post, get a little bit more info and the links to all of the assets that I used here. And don't forget to hit subscribe. All right, thanks for watching.